couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how you doing? I hope you have your fingers ready for more fingerstyle awesomeness right here on Lickin' Riff because in this lesson we're gonna widen our musical horizons using six, six non-Western rhythm patterns. Um, we're gonna learn an Arabic rhythm, we're gonna learn a rumba rhythm, we're gonna learn polka, we're gonna learn calypso, and we're gonna learn two Baltic Russian rhythm patterns. Let's start with the Arabic one. It's called Muksun and it sounds like this. <laughs> That's the basic rhythm. So I'm putting on a minor uh, for the most of this lesson. I'm going to use a minor and we're going to play this. The fifth string and then the chord. Okay, and you want the chord short, so mute it after you play it. Okay, by touching the strings again. So. And then you play the chord again then the second bass note of the chord, which is the fourth string, and then you play the chord again. So it's chord, fourth string, chord. And again, you want to mute the chord after you play it. So, fifth string, chord, chord, fourth string, chord, bass, chord, chord, bass, chord, bass, chord, chord, bass, chord. Now the final touch here is to play uh, kind of a triplet pick strum at the end there, like this. Okay, ta dum. So it's dum dum da dum dum ta dum dum. Okay, dum bum ba bum bum ta dum bum. So it strings three, two, and one. Okay, in sequence. Or you can play strings four, three, two, and one as long as it sounds like a triplet. Okay. Okay, you need the triplet feel. So that's the Arabic muksun rhythm. Bass chord, chord, bass, chord, triplet. Now for the polka rhythm. Okay, just to refresh the ear, we're not gonna jump from complicated pattern to complicated pattern. So the polka rhythm is pretty simple. Let's use D minor for this one to kind of reset our ears. So, uh, because they're two different, completely different uh, expressions of rhythm patterns. So... Okay, kind of like a folk song, an Eastern European folk song. Um, you're playing the bass note of the chord, the D string, and then the chord twice. Then you're playing the alternating bass note, but you're alternating with the low fifth. So you're playing the A string next. And then you're playing the chord again. So your bass notes are D and A, the lower A. So... Okay, so if you're playing it on A minor, you can alternate with the D string. But the real polka Eastern European sound comes from the lower fifth. So you're going to want to play the E string. Got it? So it's bass, chord, chord, alternating bass note, chord. Got it? That's the polka rhythm. So let's uh, go back to something uh, more interesting, because the polka is pretty easy. The rumba rhythm. The rumba rhythm, interestingly enough, it's almost um, taking the Arabic rhythm and mixing it around. Taking the first half and playing it first. So it sounds like this. play the bass note, the fifth string, then we play the triplet, strings three, two, and one. So it's... And then right away we play the alternating bass note, the fourth string. And then we play the chord. So it's... Okay, this is played very, very slowly, but in sequence it's... Okay? Bass, triplet, second bass note, chord. Got 
טרקטרת, פאם טרקה טאם טאם, בייס טרקה בייס טאם, בייס טרקה בייס קורד, אוקיי? Now the second half is chord, second bass note, chord. Okay, so it's the chord, the fourth string, and then the chord again. And when you put them together, it's this. Okay, and you want to mute the chord before the second half. So it's mute, and then chord, bass, chord. Bass, triplet, bass, chord, mute, chord, bass, chord. two Baltic Russian rhythms. They sound like this. So again, A minor, and you play bass chord. And then the chord again, after you mute it, kind of like the beginning of the Arabic rhythm. But then you play three on the fifth string, because that's the third of the chord. And then you play the chord again. So it's... So it's bass chord, chord, third of the chord, chord again, then the alternating bass note. Then you play the fourth string, and then the chord again. So you have bass chord, chord, third of the chord, chord, fifth of the chord, which is the alternating bass note, and then the chord. Okay, if you're confused about the first, the third, and the fifth, don't worry about it, just follow the tabs. So, bass, chord, chord, third, chord, fifth, chord. The important thing here is the space between the first two chords. That creates the whole rhythm. Got it? That gives you that offbeat sound. So, bass, third, fifth, bass, chord, chord, third, chord, fifth, chord. Okay, slowly. Bass, chord, chord, third, chord, fifth, chord. Or, if you want to look at it another way, bass, chord, mute, chord, third, chord, alternating bass note, chord. Okay, no matter how you verbalize it, it's still the same thing on the guitar. It doesn't matter how you read it out. Um, you just add the third uh, fret of the A string between the bass notes and you're good to go because you get the A minor arpeggio. So uh, another interesting thing here is that you can uh, reverse it. You can play the bass, then the fifth, then the third, and then you get this. Okay, so that's another option. Instead of uh, uh, 0, 3 on the A string and then 2 on the D string, you can play 0 on the A string, 2 on the D string, and then 3 on the A string. So that's another thing you can try out. Now the second rhythm, the second Baltic Russian rhythm, is a more straightforward one. It sounds like this. Okay, so you play the fifth string, A minor, you play the fifth string as your bass note, then you play the triplet, and then you play the alternating bass note, the fourth string, and then the chord. Then you play the third of the chord, three on the A string, and then the chord. Then you play the fourth string, and then the chord again. So you get this. Bass, triplet, fifth, chord, third, chord, fifth, chord. Okay, kind of a traveling bass note there. One more time. 
bass note, triplet, alternating bass note, chord, third, chord, alternating bass note, chord. Got it? So uh, that's those Baltic Russian rhythms. Pretty awesome, right? Now for the final rhythm of the day, a Calypso rhythm, a Caribbean rhythm. Now, uh, if you've learned my arrangement of Under the Sea, and I recommend it, it's a lot of fun, um, then you're used to the Calypso rhythm. But if not, learn this and then go learn Under the Sea if you want. So um, let's see if I can get this the first time. Something like this, as you see, it's heavily borrowed from Under the Sea, but it's a calypso rhythm pattern. So I'm playing C and G. For G, I'm playing three on the second string. Okay, so we'll get to that. Let's start with C. You play the bass note, the fifth string, and then you play the chord three times. Then you play the alternating bass note, the fourth string, and then you play the chord again. So for the C chord, it's Bass, chord, 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 alternating bass note, chord. Then you play the G bass note immediately. Then you play strings two and three as your chord. Don't forget, three on the second string. Then for the next C chord, there are two options. Uh, when I loop it around, as I just did, I play this first. And then the second time around, I only play the C chord. Um, it's not much of a difference. It's playing the C chord, strings uh, 2, 3, and 5. The first time around, I add the third string. That's it. So you can choose to add it, or you can just play the chord. So the first ending is this. The second ending is just C. So you get it. C. That's the basic rhythm. If you want to loop it around, you can add the third string at the end between the two loops. So, or without the added third string. And that's the calypso rhythm. So, we had the Arabic rhythm. Calypso rhythm, the rumba rhythm, and the two Baltic Russian rhythms. Remember the reversed arpeggio and this one. Thank you very much for watching. Before you go practice this, download the tab from the website. The link is in the description. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What if you got to lose? There's a ton of lessons here for you to learn. And I upload a new one every couple of days or so. And a whole fingerstyle arrangement lesson every couple of weeks. So join the Lick and Ref community and have fun. So when you go download the tab, you'll see a donation button above the tab. And that's for helping Lick and Riff produce more lessons. I'm not Lick and Riff. Lick and Riff is the channel. But, you know, I'm the only one here. So uh, you'll be helping me produce more lessons. But you'll be helping your own guitar education. So if you want to give something back, I'd be more than grateful for any help you want to give out. Um, and uh, I thank you in advance for it. So you go practice this, have fun, share this lesson with anyone you want. Everyone has a right to learn guitar for free right here on Lick and Riff uh, and uh, enjoy their own developing skills. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'll see you the next time. Bye for now.